Ahead of Thursday's National Executive Council meeting of the People's Democratic Party, the race for who occupies the position of national chairman has taken a different twist. As a suspended chairman of the party, Yocha Ayu today withdrew a lawsuit that challenged his earlier removal. For Ambassador Umar Damagun's supporters, this upsets the chances of the acting national chairman retaining his position. Our rice correspondent Mary Chinda has more. Coming a little over a year since Nigeria's major opposition party, the PDP, lost out at the presidential election, the 98th National Executive Council meeting of the party is set for Thursday. It is not the usual meeting as the task ahead of the NEC members will be to either select a new national chairman to replace the suspended PDP national chairman, Senator Iocha Ayu, or ask Uma Demagum to continue as acting chairman. This comes as Ayu has withdrawn a lawsuit challenging his removal from the party to pave way for the likely emergence of the former Benue State Governor Gabriel Suswang to replace him as the party's substantive chairman, thereby balancing the not central equation. But ahead of the death meeting, the National Working Committee, NWC, of the party on Tuesday passed a vote of confidence on the party's acting national chairman, Umar Damagum. Nobody is calling for resignation of Damagum because Damagum is the part and parcel of the National Working Committee. What the North Central people demand, which is simple, is that allow us to complete the term of Ayu. So the issue that Ayu is in court, to me, is neither here nor there. Because in the history of the party, and according to the precedences that exist in the party, the party has never waited for any national chairman who is in court to come out of court. And I don't even believe, and from my own personal findings, I do not believe that Ayu is in court. But ahead of the proposed submission of the NWC's report naming members involved in anti-party activities during the 2023 general election, a pro Nyesom Wiki group, the Arewa PDP Transparency Group, insists on the recognition of Wiki as the party's national leader due to his current position as the FCT minister. Whether Wiki attend or not, it's not the issue. What is the main concern is Wiki has carried this party for a very long time, sponsoring the party, uh, financing the party, all alone. So I think Wiki has to be the leader of this party. That's what we are saying. As you can see, we are not done as we are supporting him hundred percent. In the meantime, some groups within the PDP have continued to request the NWC to pencil down Wiki, Samuel Tom, Ifanyo Gwani, Okezi Ikbazo, Governor Shehi Makinde, and other party leaders linked with the G5 for sanctions over alleged anti party activities that they embarked upon during the 2023 elections. Mary. Arise Meanwhile, a group of 60 PDP lawmakers in the 10th House of Representatives have commended the suspended PDP National Chairman, Senator Yoshi Ayu, for displaying a high level of loyalty to the party and exhibiting true leadership by withdrawing a lawsuit challenging his removal as chairman of the main opposition party. The group of 60 lawmakers who addressed the media at the National Assembly have been calling for the removal of Umar Damagum as acting chairman, saying that the withdrawal of the case by Ayu has removed the last bottleneck being used by Damagum to hang on to power. The lawmakers say with the withdrawal of the suit, the PDP next meeting will now proceed seamlessly with the election of a North Central candidate as national chairman to complete Ayu's tenure. The opposition lawmakers coalition of PDP, the G60 federal lawmakers received the news of this withdrawal by IU with uh, so much excitement. And uh, this has also brought to rest the arguments on why we should not have 
an acting uh, chairman tomorrow. So with this decision, uh, Damago tomorrow will revert back to his position as deputy national chairman of the party, and the party will move ahead to appoint an acting national chairman for a great party. And you need to know that this is in line with the provisions of Article 47C of the PDP Constitution, which mandates the NEC tomorrow to proceed to choose an acting or permanent replacement from the zone or area where the former occupant originated from. And the former occupant is Senator Iyachuayu, who have now removed the case where he is challenging his removal and claim to the chairmanship to pave way for the party to move forward. That is a great uh, sacrifice. It shows high level of uh, 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 patriotism in terms of his love for the party to move forward. He has case that he's arguing. He has things he feels was not done the right way. But he said, if, instead of allowing people who doesn't like the party, who wants to destroy the party, to continue to attempt to bury the party, then let me not make that sacrifice. Let me not drop my case and allow the party to move forward. Joining us now from Kaduna is Umar Sani, a former senior media advisor to former Vice President Namadi Sambo. Honorable Ikenga Ogochinyere, a PDP member of the House of Representatives representing Ideato North South Federal Constituency of Imo State, will be joining us later. Good morning, Umar Sani, good to have you on the show. It's my pleasure, Dr. Abati. How are you and how have you been? I'm good, I'm good. Well, quickly, I mean, in that uh, okay, I, report. Ex extend, extend my, my regards to Rufai Husseini and, and others. Yes, they can hear you. They are here in what the studio. It? So first, uh, neck meeting. Yeah, how are you, Mr. Rufai? Blessed, I'm very well, sir. Thank you, sir. Bless you, sir. Yeah. Neck meeting of the uh, People's Democratic Party. There's been a build up. The uh, National Working Committee meeting, the BOT meeting, caucus meetings, all over the place. And now, today, uh, there are expectations. Honorable Gochinyere was just saying that with uh, Senator Yochi Ayu withdrawing the case in the court, we takes, you know, the party back to uh, where it was when his word expelled him for one reason or the other. I imagine that it was now take the opportunity to go and correct whatever they were complaining about. Now, uh, there are stories out there that uh, Ambassador Damagum has been uh, chosen, anointed by uh, um, uh, Inyesom Wiki, the minister of the FCT, who remains a member of the uh, PDP and was seen at uh, you know, the various uh, meetings uh, on television. Uh, so what will be the outcome today would uh, Ambassador Damagum remain in office automatically, or the party is likely to have a convention uh, very soon to, uh, you know, properly appoint, select a chairman for the party? What, what do you think could be the, the things we should expect today in terms of outcome? Well, in terms of outcome, the... Uh, NEC is the second largest organ of the party, only second to the National Convention. As such, the NEC has wider powers as provided for in the party's constitution. One of which is that they are at liberty to determine whether a vacancy exists you know, in the office of the national chairman, if previously it didn't exist because there was a court case that was encumbering, you know, the redirection of the position of the national chairman, now, from information available, you know, that uh, Dr. Iocha Ayo has withdrawn his court case, which also must be presented before NEC for them to be very certain that there is no any legal incumbrance. Then <clears throat> one can say that there is, you know, ample opportunity for the party to now take a position. However, you know, putting it more succinctly, taking a cue at our party constitution 
and previous uh, precedences set by the party, one can say that without any equivocation, that this has been the practice of the party and it has always been very consistent. Uh, if you remember, when uh, Adamu Mazu resigned as the national chairman of the party and Prince Uche Secondos was acting national chairman, the Northeast complained that they ought to finish their tenure. They would not allow any other zone to finish their tenure for them. And as such, <coughs> as such, uh, the, the NEC held a meeting and decided to bring in Alimodu Sharif to complete the tenure uh, of the Northeast. You see, because Adamu Muazu is from Bauchi State, and so uh, Alimodu Sharif, being from Borno State, falls within the confines of the Northeast. So his coming to complete the tenure was in line with Section 47 subsection C of our party constitution. And that is not even the only uh, example. Just recently, the woman leader of the party who, is from, who died, who is from Cross River State, was replaced by the South South uh, 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 neck of the party, you know, uh, you know sec of the party. And <clears throat> A new person was uh, appointed to complete her tenure, and the lady comes from where the the, the, the former one was and that died. Similarly, the zonal chairman of the southwest, you know, passed away, who is from Ocean State, and the person who has replaced him, you know, as provided for by the south southwest. Uh, caucus of the party, you know, came from Ocean State. So the party has a tradition. Now the question is whether IU has really withdrawn the case because with a legal encumbrance, it would be difficult for the NEC to take any decisive uh, action. But be as it may, it is the the turn of this North Central to complete their tenure. And so if IU is not there, it is the North Central that will complete their tenure. That not, that, having said that, it does not preclude the fact that Damagum will only revert back to his uh, uh, status quo, the initial position he was voted for. But will that be possible today? The today will only be a decision day. It is a decision where whether the NEC will agree to say, okay, this thing should revert back. And, or, or we'll say, okay, let us have a mini convention to be able to elect somebody from the North Central to complete the tenure. Or to call for a special convention, you know, to address this uh, matter. Whatever the NEC will decide today, which is within the constitutional provisions of our party, it will, be, it will not be out of place to say, okay, even if they decide that, okay, Damagun should continue as acting, pending certain things are put aright before, you know, he can be replaced. These are all within the powers of uh, NEC, but uh, at least we have an idea what NEC should be able to do. Although I heard that uh, yesterday at the caucus meeting, I, I read it in the papers, that uh, it was agreed that the issue of Damagun will not be discussed uh, at the NEC meeting. I think uh, the caucus is, has overstepped its uh, boundaries because their responsibilities are merely you know, to ensure a good interface between the party and the government and not to determine uh, what will be discussed and what will not be discussed. What will be discussed at NEC is the prerogative of the National Working Committee who will prepare the agenda for the meeting. All right. And in preparing the agenda for the meeting, they will consider all factors that are required for NEC to know. Because some of the decisions that the Working Committee, National Working Committee are taking 
have to be ratified by NEC for it to stand. Otherwise, uh, it will be reversed, you know, if it does not stand. So, right. however, if where such issues are not even part of the agenda, at the meeting, somebody can move a, a motion for the amendment of the agenda, you know, and a new item can be included as part of the agenda for discussion at the meeting. So, uh, the meeting is an open-ended meeting until right. we see what the outcome is. Okay. But we hope that the outcome will be in the best interest of our party. All right, thank you so much. So um, at, the, at, the, at the moment, it cannot be called because even for the agenda, it's not clear what, will, what exactly will be on that agenda um, according to what you've mentioned. But I want, us to, I want you to examine the different, well, you, uh, permit me to use the word factions, and people who have come out to say, okay, we're supporting this person's view. In one, on one hand, it's um, former governor of River State, now minister of FCT, yes, on Wiki. On the other hand, it's a support for, oh, no, we want, um, you know, the current acting chairman to step down and, and, and the likes and the leader and so on. So there are conversations around the fact that even ahead of the meeting, there are divisions that exist. How do you think, well, the meeting later on today would repair those divisions to strengthen the party? Um, as has been said previously on this show, this is a make or mar meeting. And the decisions of, that would come out of this meeting could determine the future of the PDP. What would you say about these different factions, groups, supporting different um, opinions? Well, uh, I would not rather like to call it function, factions. I would rather say some interest groups, because uh, politics is all about interest, and uh, every segment, every part of the party, everybody wants to show that I have contributed immensely to this party, and I deserve this or that. <laughs> now, the wiki is you know, propounding the theory that after the loss of the party, he has been the one that has been you know, marketing the party has been take shouldering responsibility both financial and otherwise. And as such, he is entitled to, to be the, the highest stakeholder in the party. But, you know, PDP governors also are in disagreement. They also have their own uh, interests. Because at the end of the day, they either want to contest for presidency or what have you. So they also have now aligned themselves to say, okay, no, we are not the ones sponsoring the party. We are the leaders of our party, and we are the ones providing for even those states that have no government or PDP. And as such, we, it, is, we owe, it is a responsibility that the party owes us to allow us to determine the future of the party. Of course, the presidential candidate of the party at the last election also feels you know, a sense of entitlement as a fact that, ah, I am what the foundation, I'm one of the foundation members of the party. I have nurtured the party, you know, if not for the fact that I had an issue with my, my boss, I wouldn't have left the party, you know, for future endeavors. Now that I'm back, I want to ensure that being a founding father, that I maintain, you know, those core values which we had already set for the party to succeed. So everybody is, you know, flaunting what he ha what he, he is entitled to and what he thinks uh, and how he thinks the party should go. But again, it is a battle for the soul of the party. Everybody wants to have somebody who will do his bidding, who will support his cause, and who will do uh, whatever he wants to, to do in the future. The, the question now is, how will that be resolved you know, today. Now, if we go into the meeting with such prejudices and some uh, interest uh, divisions, the meeting will turn out to be very heated, and then at the end of the day, perhaps no meaningful decision may be taken, because from uh, the, the alignments we have been seeing, the go governor's forum, held, PDP governor's forum held a meeting, and issued a communique, you know. So there are divergent is issues. Even within uh, the, the, the governor's forum, there are also divergent issues. There are those who are supporting perhaps maybe 
which are those who are supporting Atiku and those who are on their own. So the interest aggregate is such that it will be very difficult for anybody to see that at the end of this meeting, this is the way the decision will go. But we are very confident in one thing, that our constitution is the binding factor. Since we have a constitution that has spelled out how these things are supposed to be resolved, I think the onus is to fall on the constitution so that the constitution will resolve this matter once and for all. Okay, but the truth is, yes, you have a constitution, we understand that. But also, your party lacks discipline as we speak today. And that's why I think in the reportage this morning when, when, when they were saying that uh, Wiki seemed to be gaining the upper hand now because a vote of confidence was passed on Damagun, we all know how Wiki had been orchestrated to be able to favor Damagun. And all of those that perpetrated in your things violating the constitution of your party, it looks as though they are going to go scot free with all of this because it's the mien of peace, not of discipline that the party is taking. As we speak today, I mean, what would you say to that? And that's why a lot of people see your party as a joke. That if with all he has done in the last yes, election and other people that worked against your party, no. looks like they're going to go away with it. That's why your party could even sanction the likes of Chimaroki, Namani, and, and Co. You see, the point is, uh, these, were, these are the key issues that we're working against Damagum. You know, because there are so many other issues which have been brought to the fact that, you know, so many things were done under, under the radar. For instance, when Wiki was given minister under an APC government, you know, it's something that the party should, all, all should know. You know, everybody should know. But it was from Wiki that we had that he has consulted with the party leadership and they have given him go ahead. And it is also from him that we have had that governors were also given positions to bring, you know, by the APC government. So it, it, it begs the question, you know, when somebody comes out openly to say, yes, I have done anti-party and I, I was able to flog certain category of people with my own, you know, strength in anti-party. Again, for the same person to come out and say, once again, that in 2027, ahead of the party, that I'm also going to do anti-party because I'm going to work for another party. These are very, very germane issues which the party ought to look at. And so, uh, uh, Damagun's silence is viewed from a conspiratorial position that perhaps he is working along with Wiki. But Damagun has also provided his explanation that the party was so much enmeshed after the elections in legal uh, uh, fights everywhere. And so, the, you know, and there were so many, you know, uh, various interest groups creating trouble here and there within the states. And so they were very busy trying to address those very germane issues that they did not have time to sit down and critically look at those who have done anti-party or not. For instance, Fayo Sheikh came out to say that the votes that emanated from Ekiti State for APC came from them. That is an admission, personal admission that I did anti-party. So what can you do? Now, these are issues. Just recently, uh, Otom came out to say that their leader has directed that in 2027, they are going to support Tinubu. So these are not only anti-party, they are you know, plans for future anti-party, you know, and no disciplinary action has been taken. Uh, perhaps in this uh, 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 next meeting, it will provide for such committees and disciplinary committees to now be mandated to look at all disciplinary issues and take critical, you know, measures to address the current indiscipline within the party. So. Uh, to answer your question, you know, the part, no party that has no disciplinary issues or indiscipline. You know, parties, if you look at Labour Party, they had just finished having quarrels, issues over the, the, the election of uh, Abure 
and so forth and so on. They have accused him of financial impropriety and so many other issues are emerging daily. Taking a look at APC, you can see that Ganduje was suspended by his word. The court has affirmed it. He is now arguing over it and saying he is still the national chairman and so So these are acts of indiscipline perpetrated by members of a political party. But that does not make the party not loved or not appreciated, uh, you know, especially PDP that has a long history of performance and where Nigerians, when they look back with nostalgia, they say this is the party that has put Nigeria on the right track. And so uh, we are very confident that today NEC will look at issues dispassionately and take a very firm position on all these issues, including discipline uh, of early members who have come out clearly to, to demonstrate that they, are not only, they have not only worked against our party, but they are planning to work against our party in the future and they remain within the confines of the party and even be looking for you know, positions of responsibility, positions to be able to manipulate the system so that they can you know, pr pr uh, properly prepare for 2027 for the person they want to work for. I think maybe uh, what you need to help us clarify about discipline is the fact that most of the people who worked against the interests of the party, members of the G5, or is it unity group they call themselves, apart from calling themselves G5, they are still within the party. Why has it taken the PDP such a long time to even start talking about Discipline. If some of those people uh, who worked against uh, the party, they were seated at the table, you know, backslapping with uh, others and all that. So maybe that's why some people will say, ah, is the party really serious about uh, being an opposition party? If it has one leg in its own party and it looks like it also has members working for the opposition over issues of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, zoning. The second point. There seems to be an assumption out there that uh, Senator Iyochi are you, uh, you know, withdrawing the case in court is to pave way for Senator Gabriel's Suswan. Is it automatic that when you say not central, that the position of the chairman of the party, whichever way is resolved, must go to the same state in the not central zone? After all, Benue State is not the only state in the not central area. Well, let me start with your, your last uh, question. Uh, like I said earlier on, when Adamu Azu resigned, the thing went to Northeast and it went to Borno State. It didn't go to uh, Bauchi State. Now, the sense of entitlement, you know, is not, you know, entirely, it's a not central issue. And I think there are some other people who are also interested in the matter. Uh, the chief servant, Babangida Ali, and some other people, even in Benue, you know, are interested in the position. And so there are those divergent views, but perhaps if nobody comes out to say, okay, I'm challenging this person, perhaps there is a, an underlying ad arrangement for it to be left in Benue State. If, for, as you, 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 you mentioned, you know, there is indiscipline in the party and people who are, who are engaged in such uh, act, acts are uh, left with to, to, to continue to operate within the system. Then it means that there are problems. Because if Otom is, is, has a problem, what will be his problem if the national chairman is coming from his state? Uh, would, would that be an issue of North-South divide? And then again, these are the people who actually moved that motion, agreed that the, the, the zoning arrangement was okay, and then decided that uh, this thing should move there. So later on, you know, when the thing didn't favor them at the, at the uh, national convention, the primaries didn't favor them at the national convention, they turned around to say they are working for South, 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 uh, South versus North, 
and so forth and so on. But you see, within the PDP, you know, we do not look at things from that perspective. We don't look at issues from north south. We look at it from within our own party. Which uh, which part which uh, section of the country has held that position based on our arrangement? If you look, Obasanjo had held it for eight years. Uh, Jonathan had held it for five hundred five plus perhaps six years and then Eradua two years. So uh, within our party we look at it that the North has been shortchanged because we are members of PDP. We are not members of APC. Buhari is the president of Nigeria, but it's not our it's not our choice. You know, ordinarily no no PDP person should vote for Buhari, you know, in any case. So there when when you are now bringing Buhari's tenure to now lump it on PDP it becomes an issue of, uh, uh, of denial of rights. That's why. So when you now go and say, okay, these are the issues you are creating within the party, that this, unless this thing is given to social people, otherwise it, it is wrong. Then why did you go ahead to bring in Ayu and the rest? Because Wiki was very instrumental in bringing Ayu and the rest. And he even said it himself. He said after the 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 uh, uh, con where Congress uh, the convention that brought Ayu, he said Ayu was calling him to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. He said it on the platform. So if you now brought this person, didn't you consider all those factors before doing that? Some other people were even against it and saying the thing should go to the should go to the south, but no, they agreed and so. The, and when the, the zoning committee was set up, which was also chaired by Autumn, they all agreed that the zoning for presidency should be left open. So what is the point that made them to do anti-party? Perhaps it is because they do not want Atiku to become president and they want to deny him that, that opportunity. I think that is the well, issue. Um, Umas, I, I imagine that you know, at some point, <coughs> The party will still have to deal with the issue of uh, discipline. But quickly, because I understand we're running out of time. I mean, apart from PDP, you are also strongly connected with Cardinal State. That's your state. Okay, it's even on the screen. You are in Cardinal. Now, there's some kind of uh, turmoil in uh, Cardinal now. You know, the state House of Assembly says it's probing the Nasir Rufai administration. Uh, Honorable Bello uh, El Rufai has uh, intervened to say that they are looking for a fight. All kinds of uh, things going on there. I thought uh, the uh, governor and uh, the former governor uh, used to be very good friends. So what, what really, you know, is going on? Do you have an idea? Yes, I have an idea. I think the issue is not something that... Uh, is so serious but you know when you are dealing with political issues you know something that is not so serious can be made to look very serious you know by the supporters now uh, the governor held a town hall meeting where he informed the people that he has some encumbrances in running the affairs of the state because of the limitation in finances. And these are the issues. He has debts of $587 million. He has 85 billion naira debt. And of course, some contractual liabilities you know, that were hindering him from providing the, the, the promise he made to the good people of Kaduna State. And so what he was trying to do was one, to be transparent, and secondly, to let the people know that these are the issues hindering him from quick provision of those items. So if they do not see those things he has promised, it is because of these issues. But that he is working around the clock to ensure that you know he finds a way around it and be able to resolve this matter permanently. Now some people felt he ought not to have said so, and so began to now lambast him. One of them is the son of Erufai, Bashir Erufai. You know, started lambasting him, you know, and the Bello Erufai said he cannot take a position on this matter because Obasani is his mentor, 
that is the governor, is his mentor, has been his mentor. You know, he has he has helped him quite a lot. So he can't come out and denigrate the governor, you know, in any manner. You know. So these are things that have continued. You know, supporters are now one that are trying to make it big, create an issue out of nothing, and then try to make to feast, you know, to make uh, a mountain out of a motel. They are trying to say, okay, to bring Erufai into the fight. Erufai has not said anything so far. Obasani has not accused Erufai of financial impropriety or any other uh, issue. Now, the state assembly went for that to say, okay, perhaps to show loyalty to the government that they want to investigate, you know, issues between 2015 to 2023, which in summary means we're investigating Erufai. Now, if you are investigating Erufai and the son of Erufai has been very instrumental to you becoming speaker, you know, uh, you do not expect him. When you, are, when you are investigating my father and I am the one that helped you to become speaker, to not to be angry with you, to say, okay, so you want to investigate my father because you are now an ingrid. Now, this is a natural human phenomenon. That is not to say that what he has done is right, but that is to tell you that a human being must react in a way to say, okay, so I help you now, you want to deal with me. You want to deal with my father. You want to expose the L5 family. You want to disc disc discredit my father. You are so these are issues that are currently ongoing. The governor has not said anything. Erufai has not said anything. It is the supporters that are, you know, hitting up the polity, okay. trying to create, you know, a mountain out of a mountain. Well, thank you so much for your time with us this morning. We look forward to the outcome of the much-anticipated next meeting of the PDP later today. Mr. Masani, thank you.